This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. blessing me every day of my life there is oh no failure no failure in God and I can tell you oh there is oh there is No failure, no failure, hey, hey, hey. Oh. there is faith in God, and I can tell you. always right there he will never pass you by cause there is oh there is no failure to address these passages today both from Jeremiah and also from Hebrew which is the 8th chapter of Hebrew which is referenced in one of the lessons for the Sunday school in this quarter because it is so appropriate for us in preparation for revival And so today I come uh, with the purpose of assuring us as believers that we are forever covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the message I want to go home today. That we are forever covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. There's great meaning in that. We are forever covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And for those of you who are Bible scholars, you understand what was taking place in the Old Testament. And when the term, it is a shadow of things to come, is expressed you recognize that those things that were happening in the Old Testament were really in the vernacular of the day, the tip of the iceberg. It was just a little bit of giving you a taste of so that you would know something about the fullness, the richness of what God was, was preparing. Let me read, if you will, from the 31st chapter verses 30 and 34. And I want to read uh, these verses, um, and I won't be long, uh, from the International Version and the Message Version. Uh, the 30th uh, verse through the 33rd verse of Jeremiah's prophecy. Instead, everyone will die for their sin, their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes 
their own teeth will be set on edge. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Let me repeat that last line. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And then in the 8th chapter of Hebrew, beginning with the 8th verse, there are these words in the International Version. But God found fault with the people and said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. I want to read some more. From the Message Bible, this is uh, an interpretation, translation, whichever you choose. No, each person will pay. I'm reading the Jeremiah portion. No, each person will pay for his own sin. You eat green apples, you're the one who gets sick. That's right. The time is coming when I will make a brand new covenant with Israel and Judah. It won't be a repeat of the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant, even though I did my part as their master, God decrees. This is a brand new covenant that I will make with Israel when the time comes. I will put my law within them, write it on their hearts, and be their God. And they will be my people. They will no longer go around setting up schools to teach each other and about God. They'll know me firsthand. The dull and the bright, the smart and the slow. I'll wipe the slate clean for each of them. I'll forget they ever sinned. God decrees. Let me go on. I don't want to take too much time today. Forever covered. Forever covered. Forever covered by the blood of Jesus. 
if you believe that you are forever covered, the faith in that statement will empower you to see glory. If you believe that, your faith will empower you to see glory. Now, I make that statement because the sum of my message today is about the behaviors we have because of our incomplete faith. Wow. Our incomplete faith. Yeah. If there is anything that is glaring in the relationship with Jesus, with God and his children, Israel, if there's anything that is outstanding, it is that they had a like of believing faith in what God had and was doing for them. And that what he was doing would continue and they would have no need to look elsewhere. I want to repeat that. Uh -huh. That they would have no need to look elsewhere. How many of us fully yeah. recognize this to be the case? God made a promise to Israel. Mm -hmm. And if you examine Israel you will see, we will see ourselves. If you examine them, you will, we will see ourselves. Here, beginning with the garden and then moving on to where God chose people to represent him. And he didn't choose them to represent him and leave them with empty hands. He chose them to represent him and then he gave them their needs. Are you following me? He chose Israel to be his people to represent them and then he gave them their needs. But in spite of the fact God gave them their needs, they worshipped other gods. They put their faith in other things, in other people, in other activities. And because they put themselves in that situation, they sinned against the God who had promised them and who had done for them what they could not do for themselves. That's right. Amen. You Bible scholars, go back and read. And see what God did for those people that he had chosen to be his even though they scorned him, disliked him, went to other gods, and when they did not find people, they made gods. Put them up in cities and went and worship, fell down before them. They made their own gods because they were not satisfied with God. And then God just allowed yeah. armies to take over the cities that they built and destroy that that they thought was their own. God allowed that to happen. And then after they acted crazy, God opened doors for them. God fix things for them. That they might have life. And we are like that today. 
God gives us everything we need. But then we don't believe God as we should. We do not express a faith in him as we should. I said I was concerned and had to wait for, for revival. And, and the wait that I have for revival is that first of all, we have to have an understanding that no matter what we have done, God will restore us yes. if we have faith in him. Whatever you have done, wherever we have gone astray, despite what it was or is, God will fix it and he will restore us. To a relationship with him. But as he restores us. We must understand. That we have to experience. Certain things. The people of Israel sinned. And they had to pay for some of those sins. We have sinned. And we are going to suffer. For some of the sins that we have had. We have to reap what we sow. But in our reaping, God is gentle. For he gives us an assurance that no matter what the situation is, he is still our God. And if he is still our God, then we are on top. We have victory. We will overcome. Revival time is a time for us as those who are believers to look at ourselves and recognize that we are not yet all God wants us to be. And we get ourselves in a position where we can receive his spirit so that we can become what he wants us to be in spite of in spite of the failures that we have in life. But we can't, we can't get there. We can't get there unless we recognize that he is our God. Amen. You know the story, probably know it better than you think you know it. When you hear the words that I'm going to make a new covenant with you. We have to understand that this new covenant that God makes with us is not one like that of the law of the Old Testament. The laws of the Old Testament did not take into consideration those things that God had concern for us for. The Old Testament was, if I can do it with my power and my strength, everything will be all right. But the new covenant that God makes with us is, I know you can't do it. So I'm going to make it possible for you to enjoy that which I have for you. Even while you are still failing to have the strength to do it yourself. You'll never do it yourself. Because all of the Old Testament is a shadow of things to come. And the Old Testament was about the priests who took the, the, the animals and, and laid them on the altar and bled them. And they were to take away our sins. They took the animal off the sacrifice and took it out of the city, the ashes, and took off their pants and clothing that they had on so that there would be nothing of that sin that they would carry back into the temple.
But God said, I'm going to put a new law in. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's not going to be about ashes and animals. The new man is going to be covered by the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. It's not going to be a going back and forth to the priest to, to buy a grace. It's going to be about the blood of the priest, the high priest who dies for your sins and removes them forever. So what is revival about? Revival is about this new covenant. It's about us understanding that no matter what your situation is, God is not looking at that. He's forgiven that. He's cast it into a sea of forgetfulness. God is concerned with fixing you for the rest of the journey that you have with him. Amen. And to make the journey as we can and should we have to be restored. Amen. We have to be yes. revived. Amen. Not one of us is always the same. Amen. If you believe you are, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> We're not always the same. We don't have the same energy. We don't have the same focus all the time. Amen. We don't have the same desire. Amen. We don't will it. We're not the same. But God says, I don't care about that. You come to me and I will restore you. Amen. I will make you what you ought to be but you have to come to me. Yeah. And that's, that's why I am emphasizing revival. Mm -hmm. Because revival is not simply for you to go out and witness to somebody. You have to have a witness in your own breast. Amen. You have to have something going on inside of you that is meaningful. That when the time comes that you do go out to witness that you will be visible in the eyes of the other individual because of what is in you of God. And so God said he would restore his people. And our prayer is that God will restore us here at Bethesda. I'm not pastoring the world. I'm pastor here. And I need, I need you to understand and see the vision. That's why you have to understand that I'm concerned about making the sermon relevant. And making the sermon relevant means that we have to live in the now. The now. We have to get ourselves ready to do what has to be done now. And that's what God was calling the people of Israel to do, to get ready to do that which was needed to be done then. Mm -hmm. And what needed to be done then was to believe that God was able to do everything that they needed done. Let me ask you this question. How many of you really believe in God?
Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you really believe in God? How many of us are willing to stand, step out on a limb? With that being the only support, seeing nothing else but the limb for God. How many of us are willing to believe that when we step out on the limb, God will take care of us? We're at that point. We're at that point where we can no longer come here ourselves. We've got to really hear that word, go. We've got to have whatever energy the Lord gives us to be his disciples so that we may claim those in the world for him. Now, this, this may seem a little raggedy to you, but I have great concern for young people. And I'm concerned that we don't have enough interest, enough willingness to reach out and touch those out there who are waiting to be touched and who need to be touched. And I want to tell you this, that in these next weeks and months, as a pastor, that will be my focus. We've been serving other gods. And do you know the other gods that we're serving? Ourselves. We've got to see the vision of the need to develop through the powers that God gives to us, other men and women, young men and women, boys and girls. I'm going to be very open with you. Things that are wrong in this world are not the, are not the fault of those who are committing the wrongs in many instances. It is the like of our witness to them. It is the like of our willingness to mentor them. It is the like of our willingness to go and get them and show them the way. Now the Bible says that if you will altogether humble yourself, the Lord says, what? I'll restore you. I'll restore you. He's calling on us today to humble ourselves so that he may restore us. Count on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations, promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, 
video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments, church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote.